Oh my god, the return of Chica rapping. And a sp special opening. Is this- is it happening? Is this the rap episode? It's been prophesied. It's been prophesied. Yes, exactly! He couldn't rap in the karaoke room. And he was talking about lyrics with Ishigami. I must become a rapper. Yes, here it is. And it's such a special episode, we don't even have time for an intro. Just get into the rap. <laughs> and he's crushing it right now. I feel the energy. Sika's so coming out of retirement. Is this the third? This is the, the third in a, in a trilogy, right? Chika Fujiwara wants to beat a rhythm. You know. You know what it is. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Why would you look down on hip-hop or rap? You don't need to explain it, Yuki. You don't need to make it intelligent to like it. You know, you knew it all along. I had a event. It was traumatic for everyone. <laughs> my vulnerabilities. <laughs> That's my deepest vulnerability. Rapping. And she said it wasn't the rapping, which made it clear that it was. Well, this really made an impression. You know? I really felt it that episode. I really felt the chemistry, which is weird to say in a show about him and Kaguya, but... Lyrically. <laughs> Chika is a true artist. Oh no. But like, it's one of his greatest characteristics is that he gets a, a hint of what he's not good at and he just goes full speed into it. That's an underrated skill people don't talk about. If you can weather the storm of embarrassment, <laughs> there's nothing you can't do. I was debating this with a friend. I feel like at some point in our ancient animal history, embarrassment probably was a life or death thing. That's my feeling at least. Generally things that are, are the deepest, that come up before thoughts do, and things that are just guttural and terrible, or great for that matter. And any, anything that's sort of a, a natural response, like a body response, is probably ingrained through a trillion years of evolution. And for something to be evolutionarily determined means it was closely linked with either sexual selection, being chosen by a mate, or natural selection, you know, surviving long enough to have a mate at all, or have multiple mates. And of course there's a link between those two things, because generally sexual selection selects for things that give you advantages in natural selection. But anyway, the fact that embarrassment is so pronounced and is so devastating suggests to me that at one point embarrassment was a deadly thing, and not the feeling itself, but the fact that it's connected to status and structure. And I think a lot of human natural selection was from not just the animal world and the dangers within, but dangers from other humans, you know, vying for power and for mates, I guess. This is all just theoretical, but I can imagine a time where you really embarrass yourself and it lowers your ranking so that anybody who is gunning for your spot or already has reason to do you in is emboldened by that or can amass a group to defeat you or whatever pitiful group you've amassed. Because human survival is probably based not as much on strength as it is in other animals, but on the ability to form cohesion within group since three people of average strength will probably beat someone of greatest strength. Why that's significant beyond just the theory is because for most people living in modern society, there's actually no risk of embarrassment, or at least the levels of devastation caused by feelings of embarrassment do not at all match the inherent risk to those situations. So I think that's important to grasp conceptually in overriding that. So many things that are great are going to require a reach into unknown territory, which is going to expose you to embarrassment. It's difficult to really swing for the fences if you're not afraid to be seen striking out, you know what I mean? And that I think is one of Miyuki's gifts. You know, he, he's able to mitigate it somewhat by doing it privately, which I think is smart, but he doesn't shy away from it. And he ends up actually getting good at these things with the guidance of very talented, very artistic Chika. I am intrigued and terrified. I'm so excited and scared. Death. Oh, for real? Uh, I think I, I'll be alright. I'm gonna take the risk. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, boy, yeah. Hit him with that boy, Muki. Does boy rhyme with boy? If so, he is the rhyme master. He told you. He told you. <laughs> to the whole musical world. And also the fact that you just said boy a hundred times. Oh, this is a uh, combination of the two previous skills. This is the last boss, maybe. And there they are. Yeah, speaking of bosses. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Can you text a rap? I just like snotted all over myself. <laughs> and then wiped it with my hands. There's no going back now. Oh no! It's like Zuko going out alone without Iroh. Necessary. We're gonna learn this together, just like Zuko and Iroh. 
<laughs> these montages. <laughs> Lyric notes. She sells seashells by the seashore. I could use some diction practice myself. It's not rapping unless you're moving your hands like this. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> it does? Ooh. Ooh, sweat drop. Oh, damn, this one's a diss track real fast. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. I feel like if she had a mic, she would drop it. Just really wanted to get that out. We had an arc so quickly. <laughs> I mean, whatever gets you there. This is a yeah, weird cycle of them, like, creating nothing out of something. Impressive. The universe manifests itself. Even his laughter is offensive. Wow, she really said Mother Xer. Let's do a whole episode on this. I also like how they're just outdoors for no reason. Hayasaka wants to talk. This is not the heart to heart that she wants or expects. They all have different ideas of who her Taka is, yeah. She says casually. Lower your expectations, Herthaka. <laughs> I guess she's officiating, like it's a fight. Is she gonna respond? Does she have a verse of her own she can drop? At least Kage left her Pokemon hat this time. A rap confession. Exactly. Welcome to Kage-sama Love is War, ultra romantic. I'm bracing myself for discomfort. Gives it up to himself. Here, here we are. Expressing our feelings. <laughs> really practice, huh? Chicken's actually a great backup. <laughs> it's amazing. But well, we definitely expressed something. <laughs> it got through. I mean, she had context. It's gotta hurt being the only one who doesn't get it. Oh, there's another one. Some people quit while they're ahead, but, you know. Wait, hold on, we got a verse for this. We got a misunder don't misunderstand me verse. Nice rhyme. <laughs> I don't know. This episode is overwhelming. I need a break. Her Thaka needs to rap. You are a blue ass. <laughs> what does that mean? I have no idea what that meant, but I'm insulted and also slightly flattered. Suddenly Broadway musical. Yikes, a scathing verse. A little twisted, no? Grab the microphone. This is your chance to show everyone you're not a blue ass! Kaguya, her Thaka rap battles. Talk about her hat! Roast her hat! <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> poignant guitar track. That was spectacular. <laughs> that was one of the best skits in both its hilarity and its very odd emotional weight. Is that part of her interest in Miyuki, just trying to emulate Kaguya? I don't know, I can't shake the feeling ever since that, that karaoke episode that they're actually really compatible. Although, it might just be that Yuki's great, who isn't compatible with Miyuki. But I mean, you know, the having a life stuff aside as sort of being an obvious yes, do that. Haisaki will never be Kaguya, but it doesn't need to be. She's pretty cool. She has her own stuff going on. <laughs> Maki Shijo wants some help. No, don't. You should run away. Hurricane Maki has entered. 
No, I was doing just fine. Just, you know, my daily crying. What's going on with these two? They got a weird relationship, her and Nagisa. Is this revenge? Does she want to, like, rub it in? Ooh, this goes back, huh? And to steal her boyfriend. I get the bizarre feeling that Nagisa enjoys it. I also think for Maki, well, I get the urge or the compulsion to kind of keep putting yourself in situations where your heart is this active, like a deep crush or a similar level of romantic obsession, not being able to turn away and, you know, throwing yourself into it again and again. There is a lot to be said for just leaving. You know, just leave. That solves the problem. It's like if you have an ex and they have a Instagram or Facebook, you know, you tell yourself you're going to keep it because, you know, why burn a bridge? Just delete it. You know what I mean? You, you're going to end up staring at it and just the way the universe works, especially the way exes work the time you look at it is going to be the exact time he or she's having the greatest moment of their lives without you and there's a shadow of another guy in the frame you know what i mean it's just going to drive you insane and not seeing it would have made you no worse off it's like one of the rare cases where i'm like yeah just hide from the truth well i mean it's not hiding from the truth because the full truth is that people are moving on your exes are moving on your exes are sleeping with people now your crush has a crush <laughs> you know <laughs> Face that on an intellectual level, but you don't need to like rub it in your own face. Like, don't do that to yourself. Just not having it near you solves so much of the problem. I don't know if this is a friendship, but this is a dicey situation for everyone. It's the blonde hair. Also, his grades are rising, and I guess some people like that. <laughs> I didn't know his name. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, it's true. I, I didn't know that either. No. That's kind of sad, actually. Bonyo Bonyo. Yeah, no. No high school suits ever. <laughs> yeah, we established this statistic. Here's another useless tip. <laughs> when you're making friends, only make friends with people who have widely different tastes than you in romantic partners. Anybody who has the same taste as you, out immediately. It's only going to be suffering and heartbreak. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I thought he was imagining Kaguya too. See, this is why this works, because they like different girls. <laughs> Miyuki, are you listening? Miyuki, are you in the room right now? This is rich. This is rich for both of them. High horse, etc. That's not why. It's not terrible advice, but it's also... Not good advice. <laughs> as far as we've seen, the reason why Tsubasa, as he's now to be known, and the other girl got together <laughs> is because he kabadoned her. He liked her first. Why did he like her and not Maki? Well, we don't really know for sure. We didn't really see the buildup that much, but probably had something to do with just what he likes and what he needs in his own life as a person and what he's attracted to. And there's nothing that you can do about that. It's not the focus because that's not where the locus of control is. The locus of control is on her. I, like, this is speaking of high horses, me on a horse that I can barely reach. The more you can zoom out and realize what the thing is at root instead of the face it wears at any given moment, the more likely it is that you're going to get what you need. It's definitely true for dating. I would wager a, a big guess that in all these sorts of obsession-based relationships, somewhere in there is a lie or a, a mistruth, which is that this person is the only vehicle from which to get something that you desire. That might just be because of a lack of experience or because it's actually rare. You haven't come across it. You don't know how you would come across it without this thing that's right in front of you. It's the bird in the hand is worth a thousand in the bush or whatever. But if you really think about it, the bush is where all the birds are. There's lots of birds in the bush. And that might sound kind of cold and callous because there's something really special about knowing someone as an individual and seeing them as a unique individual and cherishing them as a un unique individual. But it's never the case that it's 
it's going to be only one person that can give you the things that you're looking for. In fact, nobody can give you the things that you need. No one was ever made whole by a relationship. You know, a relationship can just be a great facet of a rich life. And definitely not saying I've maintained this my whole life, but if you're going to pursue this kind of really deep, romantic, passionate, fairy tale love, don't you want someone who feels that way about you? I've been on both sides of this equation. I've been in relationships where the other person was the only one for me, or so I thought, and it was clear that I wasn't on that level to them. And I've been the one for someone else where it wasn't that to me. And both are difficult. If I had to choose, I would honestly choose the one where I am enamored with the other person more than they're enamored with me, because I get to experience that, and it's a, it's a great feeling. But you gotta be in a really honest and secure place with that, where you you kind of accept that, and you're you're okay with that dynamic. And I don't think there are many people alive who can stomach that. It's, it's gonna creep in knowing that the other person isn't at that level of depth with you that you are with them. I'm sort of all over the place. I'm of two minds here because the practical side of me wants to say, think bigger, move on, just remove yourself from this whole equation, detach from this node to open it up for something else to fill it. The other part of me is a dreamer and is obsessed with not following the status quo and doing things despite the odds and following your heart no matter what. But I think either way, there's a more fundamental thing at hand, which is dispensing with some of the lies and illusions that exist in this whole fantasy. As I said, I know the feeling of being Maki and getting Tsubasa. And that was the beginning of the story, not the end. That was the beginning of the heartbreak. <laughs> a glorious, beautiful, passionate, long heartbreak full of greatness. It's so confusing. At any rate, a confession wouldn't solve anything, as I think we've established. It wasn't really in your control because it involves a, another rational thinking human being. This time, or next time, you can cry on the couch instead of the floor. Maki has been winning every episode she's in so far. Oh, we got another special ending! Nice! Rap themed? Performance themed? I like the different art style. <laughs> hey, Ishigami's there too. It'd be cool if there were subtitles for this, oh well. Hey! I feel like she's a natural. She gives us the, the crusher of an of uh, episode endings. This is, a, this is a actually a really cool song. Even not knowing the lyrics, I like it. Like, this is a song I would listen to. Hey, pushes her way through the crowd, gets on stage. Cute. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Didn't expect that at all. This show kills it with the little extras like that. Why do I feel like this is some darkness brewing with this little side trio here? What exactly is Nagisa's deal? She's Satan? She's not as innocent as she appears. She knows the deal. She knows that her friend is after Tsubasa, and she invited her to get closer. That's not a smart move. That is either just total ignorance, which I don't think is true, or it's like some real <laughs> masochist or Sadist? Sadist. Sadistic stuff. Look at me, kissing the guy that you like. All the time in front of you. Isn't it great that we're best friends? 